Welcome. Today we'll be covering the Cisco RAID controller replacement for a UCS 240M3, but this mop can pretty much be used for any UCS using an LSI Mega RAID. The card specifically we're replacing is a LSI Mega RAID 9271, and that's what we have received from an RMA group as a replacement for the field notice that came out recently. So this is the mop we'll be covering. The details of the mop have more specifics uh, covering uh, stopping the UCS in a controlled fashion and restarting it. At this point we just want to cover some of the aspects of the physical replacement of the cards once the UCS has been powered down and removed from its rack. Um, make sure that when you're using uh, this particular mop you have your ESD protection in our case, we've plugged it in to um, our earth circuit, and that's the one we'll be using. Um, and of course, uh, make sure you've also received your new card. Ensure that it's the same make and model. So this is our card. We've just unpackaged it. you notice it'll come with two brackets, a short form factor and a long form factor bracket, depending on how your chassis is designed. In our case, we'll probably be using the short form factor, uh, so we'll be having to replace the longer bracket with a shorter one. And there's just a couple of screws that you'll see that you need to remove this one and this one in order to install the new bracket. So now we'll go ahead and we'll expose the cards in the chassis and we'll show you how to get the RAID card out of the actual chassis. So first thing you want to do is we've loosened the screw at the back and then you simply hold down that button and you push the whole top cover outwards and it pops right out. Then what you want to do is simply clip on to those two holes with your thumb and pull upwards and outwards there are no screws to remove and now you've exposed the RAID card so what we want to do is just explain some aspects of the setup we have the two SAS cables that go to the RAID controllers inside the motherboard you want to make sure you note the port number in our case Port 1 is on the right side, port 2 is on the left. Note that down, that's very important. So you're going to be removing those. And also we want to point out the daughter card. Now the daughter card has three screws. There's one screw here, um, there's another screw there, and another screw there. Uh, you're going to want to remove those screws after extracting the RAID card from the mounting um, that it has uh, over here. Now in order to extract the RAID card what you have to do is first thing is depress the cables uh, simply press down and pull and the cables come right out. So you just press down on this notch and pull and that's it. Uh, you don't want to disconnect this particular cable. You will notice that this cable is connected through this system here to a battery and that is probably used to make sure uh, we maintain uh, memory functions on the card so the daughter card will be staying connected to its power source we don't want to lose anything that's stored in NVRAM the next thing you want to do is unclip the card from the bracket there are no screws like we mentioned before to remove the RAID card you simply squeeze the two levers and pull open, open it sideways and it'll pop right out. Then what you want to do to remove the card is simply just pull it out from its mounting slot and it pops right out. So now we'll go ahead and remove the daughter card. 
Okay. We've removed the screws from the daughter card. We're taking it that off the raid card assembly and we just let that hang to the side. Now to change this out you need to remove the standoffs from the raid card because you have to install them on the new one. So and we want to see the standoffs. Um, the standoffs are right here. Yeah. And those are for the daughter card and the new card doesn't come with those so you have to remove them and reinstall them on the new card. So now we've removed the RAID card from the chassis and we have the new card and we have the old card. Now one way not to confuse the two cards is to note down the serial number that's located right there and that way you don't confuse what the old card and what the new card are and so I'll just put the old card in the box and you're gonna to have to ship that back to the Cisco RMA group and you'll notice that we've already gone ahead and removed the long bracket that came with the new card installed the short bracket we've also installed some of these barrel rolls there's three of them we've installed one and it has a screw on the back you just connect to the top screw it on the back and now we're going to go ahead and install the rest of them and then also screw on the daughter card and at that point we'll be ready to install the card back into the chassis. We have now installed the daughter card onto the new RAID card. You want to make sure that when you install the daughter card you push down firmly on it so that it connects to the LSI Mega RAID card and then you can proceed and screw in the three screws that are shown here and the daughter card is installed properly. Next we want to install the RAID card onto the PCI connectors. So you want to line it up, push it in and make sure that you slot the RAID card into this notch properly and it lines up. At that point you can close the door. Next thing we want to do is to go ahead and install the LSI connectors. Port 1 in our case is on the right, port 2 is on the left. Then next thing we want to do is take the whole assembly and remount it onto the motherboard. Once that's firmly mounted everything is flush. You simply take the top cover mount it back on slide it in and make sure you connect the thumb screw and give it a few twists so that everything is secure at this point everything is reinstalled correctly and you can go ahead and mount the UCS chassis back in the rack and power it on and get your services back up and running